and roll call. Emma? Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Counselor Dubs? Yes, hello. Kathy? Here. And Marilyn? I don't see. And Linda? I don't see. And Rodney? I don't see. Um, and Jenna, thank you for being here. Um, so we do have quorum with four of us. So um, thank you all for being here this evening for late afternoon. Um, any public comments at this time? Yes, Hi. Jacob. Oh, Caitlin, do you, you can go first. Are you sure? Sure. Go ahead, okay. Caitlin. Hi. Hi. My name is Caitlin. Um, I work for Community Action Pioneer Valley on the Northampton Resilience Hub project, which is going to be like a community center in Northampton, which is hoping to open within the next couple of years. Um, the architects right now are working on kind of the design of the project and we're doing some listening sessions regarding some of the specific elements of the design process. One of which upcoming is accessibility of the building. And I was hoping that some of you folks would be interested in being a part of that listening session. Um, the dates aren't set right now. So I was hoping to get maybe some like contact information, some emails would be great um, so that we can reach out to folks to try and find a time that works. Fantastic, thank you. Um, anyone right now know right away that they would be interested in getting that information, Councillor Dubs. Yes, I'd love I'd love to, uh, to be a part of that. Def definitely, thank you. Okay, and I would as well, Caitlin. So, Keith, is there a way for you to send my email and Councillor Dubs' email to Caitlin? Is that one way uh, to do it, or is there a yeah, better way? If, yeah, that that might be easier. And anyone else? Yeah, and anyone else, of course. And if anyone not here, we can reach out to those folks as well um, to see if anyone not here would like to join as well. Um, Caitlin, do, do you have Keith's email or does Keith have your email? Okay. Yes, we have each other's, so that works. Perfect. Okay, great. Look forward to hearing more about it and the dates and times. Thank you for, for asking yeah. the question and being here. Thank you all. Jacob. Hi, thanks, Amy. Um, I have two things. Um, one, there is a um, finance, or what is it called? The yeah, I guess it's the finance committee is meeting about the allocation of the PCA fund, um, which is, let's see, it's like a little bit of an extra tax that is part of the property taxes that goes into a fund that is then matched by some percent is matched by the state and it creates a fund that can be used for open space kind of recreation things. Um, and one of the projects that Sarah Hogan, who is the NPS's um, district PT has been, I think the big advocate behind is an um, accessible playground at the Ryan Road uh, school, um, and she would love voices to go to the meeting and support it. So if anyone feels that they are interested and want to support it, um, um, please drop in the Zoom call at six tonight. Um, trying to find, uh, I'll, I'll try to find the link to that um, and put it in the chat. Um, you know, it's a playground uh, that is going to be the only accessible playground in the area. Uh, I think it'd be a great project. Um, it will provide a place for, you know, kids and adults, if adults still like to go to the playground, um, to uh, be able to access equipment that might not normally be accessible for you if you um, have accessibility challenges. Um, then the other thing I wanted to, just bring up with this group. Um, 
Yeah, it did recommend the third round. Yeah. Um, but for some reason in the last meeting, they but they deferred on the vote. I don't know, maybe Jeremy, you know um what happened, but anyway, it still it still hasn't been officially approved. It looks like it'll get approved, but it seems like it could use one last sort of public push. Um Anyway, the the other thing I wanted to ask this group about is um, get getting back to sort of sidewalks, which is why I started coming and lurking in this with this crew. Um, and um, so it, it there, here, here's this complicated thing that I feel like they're the Chestnut Street sidewalks are scheduled to be um, worked on this summer, which is great for my family. Um, but I do think that um, in some ways, I feel like Chestnut Street has like skipped the line or something <laughs> like in any case, I I, I want uh, I, I feel like the process by which money is allocated for improving accessibility in sidewalks needs to be more open um, and probably could use input um, from an interested party. And maybe that party is the Disability Commission. Um, so I'm not sure how to solve that problem. Um, I think it's great that sidewalks are being, that, that the Chestnut Street sidewalks are being upgraded from a personal standpoint. I think it's not necessarily the sidewalks that should have been picked first among all of the sidewalks that need to be upgraded in the town. Um, first of all, it's like a third tier sidewalk on the disability, uh, on the accessibility report that came out in 2020 or whenever that was, it wasn't even one of the top tier ones. Um, and I'm not sure that like, you know, other people are advocating for sidewalks for them as well, et cetera. So I don't know what the answer is, but I think that, um, more public oversight might be valuable. Um, perhaps the Disability Commission can annually provide uh, using that previous report as sort of a foundation for understanding like where broadly sidewalks need to be fixed, and then perhaps make recommendations to the mayor, et cetera, whoever is making that final decision. Um, so that that is kind of what I'm putting out there as a general idea without really understanding or knowing what the actual implement implementation of a of a real doable sort of group a, a doable way to solve the problem that I think is like one arbitrariness uh, and two like like not enough uh, um, sunlight onto how the decision was made and like the process by which the decision was made. So that's that's my public comment. Thank you very much for both of those, Jacob. And um, we will take up that sidewalk conversation again as it is ongoing. Um, and I think at least maybe a couple of us will be at the 6 p.m. meeting tonight. Um, any other public comments? All right. Um, and welcome, Marilyn. I see you're here. So, Hello. hi. Uh, approval of previous minutes from May 14th. Is there any discussion on the minutes? And if not, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. <clears throat> And a second. I'll Thanks, second. Kathy. Um, all right, so a uh, roll call vote. Uh, Emma? Yes, I approve. And Councillor Dubs? Yes. And Kathy? Yes. And Marilyn? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you all. Next up is a report from City Council. So if you have any disability uh, commission or disability community related stuff from City Council, Councilor Jobs, that would be amazing. Of course, yeah, thank you. Um, not, not a lot to update today, but um, I can um, say now officially that Jenna Perna Elias is, is a member of our commission 
and as well as um, Sydney Meininger. We, um, I interviewed her as part of my role on city services, and um, and then she was um, subsequently approved by the full city council to be on the commission. So we now have a full commission of nine members. Um, and actually, I was going to mention that, like in terms of like voting and uh, adding Jenna, Jenna and Sadie's name to to the uh, to the uh, like the agenda at the top of the top of the agendas. Uh, I think it's okay to go ahead and do that now, and and for them to be included in the voting. Oh, sorry, was that Amy? Can I can I interrupt? Sorry, just uh, technically speaking, neither one is officially on the commission yet. They have to go through a swearing. Oh. Meeting. Process. Oh, there's a so, swearing in. Okay, I yeah, forgot. One, I didn't realize. That. One more step. So that's why Jenna's not on. Gotcha. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, thank, thank okay. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, um, so Next we time, do officially have an official quorum. We're not. <laughs> I just gotcha. wanted to be clear on that because quorum is. Oh, well, Marilyn's here now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was that last step. Soon, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry gotcha. to interrupt. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. And then I was also just going to echo what Jacob Drew was talking about, about Ryan, Ryan Rhodes Elementary um, accessible playground. Um, so that, yeah, it was approved for the first committee that it went to. And then when it went to the full city council, it was recommended by a few counselors that it, that it be sent to the finance committee. Um, and so unfortunately, there's this last step we have to get through to make it happen. But I'm hoping that if enough people show up and, and give public comment for recommendation of it, I think that the finance committee, hopefully that they'll be convinced that it's a good thing. Um, so I'll be there uh, also to speak in 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 uh, favor of that today. And um, and yeah, it'll be amazing if that could happen. Um, and so the last thing I was just gonna mention is that um, the wheelchair lift at 41 Strong Ave is um, in the works. And I was able to visit there the other day, but we, we um, Tom Murphy, the attorney at the Disability Law Center, and I were we were both invited to visit the set the uh, the building and got to see the inside. They're building a, a really cool is like a hallway that leads from the outside of uh, the side entrance to the. They're making like a new side entrance to the building. You can go in as soon as you go in. You go right through the right through the hallway to the elevator, and that will take you to all three businesses in the building. And um, it's going to be amazing. Um, they're, they're, they're like starting construction. They're, they're already getting pretty far into the hallway. And then um, the actual wheelchair lift will be installed. It won't be until August, but it'll be the beginning of August when that's installed. And um, and then I asked them, I asked the owner, like, how, how, like, how will it, how will, do, how would a disabled person enter the building? Like, will we have to ring a doorbell? And he said, no, that um, it's actually totally totally like open to the public you could you just go right in through the door that they're building and the like it just it just has to lift the lift doesn't actually have to go that high it just goes up a little bit and then you're in the in the hallway so it's going to be it's going to be awesome and um it'll be done pretty soon so that's the only update i have at the moment fantastic great news yeah thank you uh oh yes okay so nominations for chair and vice chair so um the floor is open for folks to nominate themselves or anyone else for chair and vice chair this is a full year appointment so the next vote will be in june of 2025 so it was a little um different last year for various reasons. So just to be clear on that. And I'm so I don't have any recommend any nominations right now. So if you make a nomination to be the first, but uh, thank you. Know. Emma, would you like to be chair or vice chair? Well, I would like to re-nominate Amy for chair. <laughs> and how about you? Are you interested in continuing as vice chair? I would. I would be, but I Great. obviously would be so excited if someone else was interested in a leadership position. Yes, it's good to good to rotate periodically, but I I uh, nominate you officially for vice chair. 
Oh, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy or Marilyn, are you interested in being chair or vice chair this next year? My first choice would be for the two of you to continue. <laughs> Fair. I'd have to agree with Kathy. Marilyn? Do, do you have interest in being chair or vice chair this year? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not able to get, I don't know what's going on, but I'm not able to get my picture up there. That's okay. Okay. A little funny to to run this right um, <laughs> um okay so then we um do a vote a roll call vote since there's um, only i had uh in the notes i had july as the voting dip month oh excuse me i thought we voted now and then it became official july Okay, great. So those are the current nominations. And then if there are other nominations between now and July, then um, those can join the, join the voting. All right, thank you. Um, so to the meat of it, uh, we have this fantastic uh, event that is being formed for July for um, in honor of Disability Pride Month, um, the online resource fair that um, a few folks have been hard at work getting folks to be on the panel and thinking about it. Um, Kathy, would you start us off? and kind of frame out what the current status and plan is with everything. And then we can go from there with details. Sure, I'll share my screen and, and I'll, I'm happy to start, but uh, everybody else just jump in you know, as you wish to, because it's it's definitely been a, uh, a group effort. Um, so we're gonna try to do this reasonably smoothly this time. Do you see it? There it is. Okay. All right. So, um, so various people have asked um, asked um, the presenters that we had in mind to come, and you can see from the spreadsheet who we have um, confirmations from. I don't know if um, people want to talk about who they've talked to and who's willing to come, or do you just want me to run down the list? Why don't you just run down the list? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, CHD's All-In Barrier-Free Recreation Program had said, yes, uh, someone will come from the program. Um, All Out Adventures, thank you, Amy, said someone will come from the program. Um, I talked to Dave Fenton this afternoon, and he said that unless he's on vacation, which he doesn't think he is that day, um, that he will come. Uh, so that would be great. Um, let's see, Sullivan Consulting Educational Advocates, Jacob spoke with, and they're coming. Uh, ben, thankfully, is coming as well. Tom Murphy from the Disability Law Center has said yes. Um, and uh, Jeremy said he had talked to Chris Palomas uh, about coming, and Stavros also said they would send someone. So we have quite quite a number of people who are interested in attending. Um, I know uh, the format we talked about was somebody people would present for like five minutes or so and then have time for a discussion afterwards. I have to say that when I mentioned that with Dave Fenton, he said, I can't explain this program in five minutes. So, so you know, I don't know if we want to be flexible or what, but, um, but that's what we have. So it seems like we have a program. How many is that now? That is one, two, three, eight. And what about, will you scroll up? What about, um, Jacob, what about, 
CPAC, S-E-P-A-C. It says yes, contacted, but then available is empty. Yeah, I never heard back. Um, I will try again. It's a pretty big group. I'm sure, I, I, I'm assuming we can get somebody, but um, okay. I, I have to try them again. Okay, so eight confirmed. Let me see if I can make my screen bigger so you can see it all at once. And the, the, the two remaining people for me are pretty close to confirming. Um, I'm just waiting to hear back from Meg from Meg um, from from the uh, accessible trails and then also uh, I spoke with the director um, the director director William Joyce of the of the MAAB and he said that he would like to speak and he was interested in it he just had to get permit he had to speak to his his boss to make sure that that was okay but I'm so I'm just waiting for those two confirmations and those should be good this is fantastic yeah. so eight to ten people potentially that sounding right mm -hmm. yeah and so timing wise because we have we have six to seven thirty slotted right that's the goal i almost wonder if that with that many people if we should slot two hours i don't know if that's too long but i was just thinking you know just even the transitions between people will take time Two hours feels long to me. What do, what do other people think? Well, maybe it's possible that we could schedule it for the, I don't, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, but maybe we could schedule it for two hours and then maybe it won't take, you know, maybe we could try to aim for it to not take the full two hours, but have it available if we need it. That's just a thought, but yeah. Yeah, what do other folks think? I was gonna say a similar thing to Jeremy, like the option for, to go longer but to try to aim for the hour and a half time <laughs> yeah that sounds good um so then each presenter having maybe about seven minutes five to seven does that seem because if we have 10 presenters and they're each doing the hour and 10 minutes if they're each doing seven minutes I mean, it's a, you know, it's a ballpark. Does that seem like a, you know, a reasonable time slot for folks? I think that sounds reasonable. Because some people, I think, probably have said, I think I heard, oh, no, I don't know how I'm going to talk for five minutes. So I'm sure there's a balance, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. So some will, yeah, some will speak more and some will speak less. And that is fine. Um, oh, and are we planning a, a, a question and answer period? Or was I that... thought so, yeah, at the end. I guess I, I was just, in my, in my mind, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I was picturing... Uh, like who people somebody would speak and then we could ask them a few questions after they speak. Or you mean like at the end so it would be like questions after each speaker. Is that what you were picturing, Amy, or no? I was imagining at the very end because otherwise Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it'd be really easy for one segment to go really long and then like I think it's easier to manage time wise if the panel all goes and then we have like then we'll know do we have 20 minutes or do we have 45 minutes for questions and yeah yeah that, that makes a lot know, more sense is that okay yeah no i think you're right that makes more sense yeah okay okay um and then it's you know if someone doesn't get any questions it's not quite as glaring yeah. <laughs> true, very true right just kind of we can come up with some like backup questions we should for, yes for the... good idea Yes, we should definitely, because sometimes that's what's needed to get the conversation started. <laughs> um, um, any thoughts to kind of the structure of it? So like, who's, who's going to say who's next? Or is there going to be a, like a 20 second introduction for each speaker? Um, just their name and where they're from. Um, 
and you know yeah so who's who's emceeing basically um and then like should there be an introduction or a welcome at the beginning and who's doing that and then who's doing the the kind of the the timekeeper emceeing kind of stuff Um, <laughs> it may be good to just before each person introduce them instead of introducing them all at once. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can send the um, the attendee list ahead of time, um, and then each time, each you know, just transition to say who they are and maybe the position. Uh, and then I'm you know I'm happy to do that, and because I, while well, I'll be doing it kind of anyway in my head. And if they have any presentation material, then I might have them just make them co-hosts so they can share their screen. Gotcha. Okay. That sounds good. How's that sound to everybody? So Keith, I'm, I'm calling that the, the MC <laughs> so that you're saying someone's name and what organization they're from before they speak and kind of turning the mic over to them. Um, so, Jacob, yeah. Uh Sorry. I, I think I was also thinking that, you know, the Disability Commission itself might take a slot and Amy, as the chair, maybe speak about it because um, it's always good to have more people from the community come to these meetings, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that was a thought. So if like you're doing a broader introduction of who this group is and then what this group group does um and then also maybe here's the time that this group meets you know it's a good place to come and talk about things that might concern you mm -hmm. maybe say something better than what i say <laughs> but anyway trying to like, get up <laughs> would would it make sense um if i did that right at the beginning just to say welcome thank you all for coming this is put on by the Disability Commission. This is who we are. This is when our meetings are. You know, this is what we do to kind of just, you know, kind of take this welcome and take that little slot then. Thoughts? I'm so sorry, Amy. Can you say it again? I just got distracted by the screen. The screen? <laughs> yeah, the screen disappeared. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. I admit that I missed the question, too. <laughs> no problem. Oh, yeah. um, tagging on to what Jacob said, um, would it work if... Wait, okay. What is happening with the screen? I, I got it back. I don't know what happened to it. It disappeared, but I got it back. I think actually, do we do we still need it? I just wanted to make to make a comment. Um, oh yeah, go ahead. The group, which is that um, we should probably fill in the email and phone numbers if we can, so that Keith has them for sending out the information ahead of time. And now I'll stop sharing. Good. That's a good idea. <laughs> so they yeah. can be not distracted. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, if we don't do that, Kathy, will you send an email reminder to those of us involved? I will. Um, um, oh, so so just uh, piggybacking off of what Jacob said is, would it make sense if I welcomed people? Thank you so much for coming. This is put on by the Disability Commission. This is who we are, what we do. This is when we meet. You're always welcome and encouraged to attend, share your experiences uh you know needs blah 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 would that make sense to kind of do that slot kind of in conjunction with a welcome like yes okay <laughs> <laughs> yes i love that okay <laughs> and also maybe to just plug that it's disability pride month and this is our disability pride event yes excellent thank you emma do you want to say something as well we could do it together. Or... Um, I, I can, but I'm so happy for you to 
be our spokesperson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> I'll only get a little nervous. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Other details that need to get worked out and like Keith, you're doing the the tech meeting. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um now this is can I just clarify this is not an official disability commission meeting. So we don't have to do a roll call situation, kind of like Crip Camp last year, right? Um I think uh yes, I mean if you all are hosting or is it safer to? It is just safer and if we're posting it on the city website, you know, then yes, it would be. But you know, okay. I don't all we have to do is just open and close the meeting, you know. Okay. Do we and do a roll call? Uh like those yeah. first steps, just so I'm clear on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the notice that it's being recorded. Yeah. Do we have to do a public comment time? No. Okay, great. All right. So it's being recorded and a roll call and then go into the program. Okay. Um, and so then, so you'll post it on the city website for us as a an Correct. Yep. meeting. Great, thank you. Um, so other, other logistics, yeah. Besides PR, we haven't gotten to PR. Yeah, Jacob. Um, this is probably not possible, but I'm wondering if it makes sense to try to schedule them ahead of time. Um, I'm I'm worried about two things. One, if people have a particular interest, they might just want to come and see a particular person. And also, our speakers may not be able to come for all. 70 minutes or whatever it's going to be and may want to just hop on for their piece. So yeah. I, and I don't know if that's logistically possible to get like the precise schedule down, but maybe, you know, close or something. Yep. Um, yes. Is that possible for the subgroup to look at? to kind of decide a good flow and order. Sure. Or do you want to do that right now? Well, I think what Jacob was also saying, so, some people might not be available the whole time. So I don't know if we should reach out to the people and just say, you know, can you be there the whole time or do you have some restriction? True. Yeah. Start scheduling. Yep. Good thinking. Okay. So those of us who reached out to folks are going to circle back around and ask about their availability to see. And I would maybe say, like, give them option of being there the whole time, being there for the first 40 minutes, no, the first 35 minutes, the second 35 minutes, or does that make sense? And if they can stay for the, the Q and A, right? Because some people will speak for three minutes. And if we have four people speaking for three minutes instead of seven minutes, and then the next person's not ready to go, right? It's gonna be more challenging. So I would kind of offer like blocks of time. What do you think? Anyone wanna tag team onto that? To... I, I'm i just thinking that they're not gonna be there for the Q and A if they just come and do their piece, right? So- yes. I know both of the people that I talked to, I basically said, I didn't, wasn't two hours at the time. It was only an hour and a half, but I basically said, this is the block of time. Mm -hmm. I agreed with that. Um, 
which is kind of why I feel like it's better for us to try to keep it to an hour and a half. It's a big, it's a much bigger ask. It feels like to me to ask someone to take two hours out of their evening for, you know, seven minutes of speaking and then potential Q and A versus mm -hmm. an hour and a half. So yeah. I did feel kind of badly when I reached out to someone like, uh, you're only speaking for five to seven minutes, but can you show up for an hour and a half? Like that felt like a big ask already. Can yeah, I, Jenna. Can I throw something out that maybe is too far from the vision? I know I wasn't part of Please. these plans originally, but do you think that people could get their like talk like just like do the briefest introduction to what they do like keep it to like two minutes just like here's what we do we do outdoor recreation we have adaptive equipment so that we make it inclusive for everyone and then could we use breakout rooms so people could seek almost make it like a virtual tabling event so people could seek out the information that they want the most um it might lead to the speaker's repeating themselves a lot, like you do at a tabling event when you're tabling, but it would probably have like the most people engaged for the most amount of time with the mm -hmm. information they're most interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that came up at some point and I'm not sure why we went with this direction, but I, I like that idea, Jenna. Yeah, Kathy. I think there's two things about that one. That's great if we have at least eight people there, but what if we don't have at least eight people there? You know, then then that gets a little awkward. And I also wonder if can we record it if we have breakout rooms? What does that look like? I right. think that was maybe I, that was the deciding was factor. Yeah. Cause then it's not recorded. So people can go back and use it as a resource. And yeah, right. Like it makes sense in that in the moment for that evening if they're you know, if it's a robust showing, especially. Um, um, it's, a, it's a nice format if there was a robust showing. Mm -hmm. Did someone ask, uh, Emma, uh, Amy, when you were talking about the 30 minute break or 35 minute of doing like maybe two or three presenters and then having a quick question and answer question, a uh, question, question and answer and then do the next block of a few speakers and that way if people are compressed for time we could still do question and answers but then if they need to leave they could mm. it's like a combo of what, how i was thinking about it and how jeremy was thinking about it i like that um yeah what what how would that work logistically what do you all think so like kind of grouping similar folks together, like All Out Adventures with uh, the first one on your list. Yeah, and maybe the Accessible Trails. Maybe Accessible Trails, because yes, outdoor. Uh, Jess is with, whichever the first one on the list was, sorry, I'm not remembering. Is she part That's of kind of CHD? Funny. Oh yeah, thank you, yep. Oh yeah. Um, so I just as an example, like kind of the overlapping and then doing so we just have to watch the time to have yeah, so if we had like a half an hour for each group, presentation and Q and A included. Hmm, I like it. What do you all think? I like that. That sounds doable. I that, think that makes the most sense. The, the, yeah, yeah, awesome. Thanks, about. thanks, Keith. That's a great idea. Um, so thirty minute segments. Okay, so then when we reach out to folks, we can say, "Well, we have to coordinate so they're all available." But yeah, see when they're available and then kind of assign them to a segment. That's doable. Okay. So maybe three presenters in each segment. 
maybe Tom Murphy and Chris Palamas could be in the same segment because since they're both dealing with access to, to buildings and things like that. Mm-hmm. Something, you know. Mm-hmm. And maybe the MAAB? Um, I think that's what I... Yes, okay. that, I meant I meant to include that when I said yes. Oh, yes, okay. Exactly. So, so, and, so, and the lawyer, Tom, right, yeah. Tom, the Disability Law Center? Yeah, so maybe Chris, Tom, and MAAB in the same segment, since yep. that's all about, all about access. Yeah. Q&A. That's great. Um, any other logistics before we move on to um, PR, flyer, social media, getting the word out? Or anything we're not thinking about? Um, Um, so a flyer, Jenna, to put you on the spot, are you still interested, willing, able to? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so very much. Yeah, um, you. so can we kind of brainstorm some ideas to, to give to Jenna so that she can get started on a flyer? Um, so do we want all the panelists listed? That would be nice, right? To advertise, it'd be good for them and it'd be good for, uh, so people know what's coming. So um, Kathy may be sharing that spreadsheet with Jenna and we'll get, we'll find a way to get your email, Jenna. Um, so that so you have the name of the each organization yeah great um and it is you probably already know all this but it's july 16th at 6 p.m is that correct feel free to jump in anybody so right so do we want to say 6 to seven thirty, and just aim for that I mean, you know, sometimes things go over, but hopefully we can, okay. Six to 7.30. Um, and uh, the official name of it? What have you been calling it, Kathy, on your, uh, or what is it on the agenda here? The online resource fair? Yeah, something like the Disability Commission's online resource affair. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to say first annual, if we want to commit to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to, you know, to, to say that it's coming from the Disability Commission. Uh, I don't know if we can say it's our first ever. <laughs> Why not? So, I mean... Well, I don't do. I mean, has anyone done it before? Oh, that's a good Probably question. Probably not because I mean, online stuff didn't really happen much before COVID, right? That's a good point. And I and we've been on the commission, MNI, and other people since then. So I think feel like we would re yeah. remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's also clearly the world's greatest. I don't know if we want to throw oh, that in front. Definitely but, good, Jacob. Thank you. Like yeah. World's greatest pizza, world's greatest, you know. Yep. yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, and in um in celebration of Disability Pride Month. Yes. Yes, you. that's What's definitely important. That? Um and a link. Keith, are you able to share a link for it? Soon? Yeah, once uh tomorrow I'll uh, create the uh the thing. Um, okay. What what about like a scan code? Is that something we could do? Where it would like you just like use your phone, take a photo of it, and then it goes, it sends you the link or takes you there. QR code. A Q, that's what I meant. Yeah, QR code. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never used a QR code for Zooms, but I imagine it would be okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I have either, but I think it'd be okay. I could do a test run. Okay. <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah. 
yeah. I've always used it to go to other sites, but never to Zoom. Huh. But let's, yeah, let's do if we can do that. Um, so, oh, so Keith, can you get Jenna the link once it's made? Will do. Awesome. Um, and accessibility features. So, closed, closed captioning, captioning, yeah, is an option. Um, I think it being recorded could be worth mentioning in that area. That's okay. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Recorded and put on the city's uh, website for future use. Um, do, would ASL be something that we could procure for this event, Keith? And I mean, is that something where we say, if you want ASL, contact us or? Yeah, I mean, uh, the all city events, um, people have the ability to ask for translation and ASL and things like that. They just need to give us 40 hours notice. Um, it is definitely better to get previous notice because even more notice than that, because they are um, the they are very busy doing other other you know things. So so yeah. I feel like if the idea is to have it like as a resource later, it could be useful to make sure it's accessible and as many ways as possible that's that's a great um point emma so even if no one needs it that day then it's recorded um so the recording so it how does that work keith sorry i've never done a recording of zoom so does your view do you keep your view a certain way so that the person uh the interpreter would be visible yeah you can you can pin uh, a person uh yeah. to the top so if we got um a sound language interpreter we just pin them pin them to the top and then they would just remain yeah great so could we um Put in a request for an interpreter for that day and time. Oh, uh, we can, yes. Awesome. Is there anything you need um, from us, or is that something that you move forward with? No, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need. Um, so, yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, other accessibility features it's not in person so it's not about masking or scent or um, noise or is there anything if people have presentation materials do we need to provide accessibility guidelines for those i don't know mm -hmm. if that's something that is done mm -hmm. or not but... mm -hmm. that's thank you um that can be cool yeah so that it can be um a text only version available right without all the pictures and like a transcript of the meeting for yeah for screen readers for people with low vision or blindness yeah so those of us who are reaching out to the 
panelists um, asking if they have any materials that they're going to use to in their presentation, you know, screen sharing. And so making sure that that material is um, works with screen readers. Is that, am I on the right track? I don't know a ton. I think I think so. And also maybe um if they're going to like I don't know what people would be um wanting to, to like if there's some kind of document they're trying to share after, but like having larger print for the if there was a document they wanted to share it would be important. There's also like color contrast checkers, like for if you have a, if you're not just using black and white um, for like backgrounds and fonts. That could be a cool resource to share as well. Sorry, I'm taking notes <laughs> to make sure. Uh... Ben left a comment as well. Oh, can you read it for me? Yep, yep. He said it's a good idea to reach out to all presenters ahead of time to ask folks to be ready to describe any information presented visually, such as charts, graphs, images, slides, etc. Yes. Thank you. Anything more for the flyer? I'll just say the uh, volunteering to hang hang flyers up. I'm happy to do that mm. when the time is is right. Thank you. I hadn't gotten there in my head yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we create the flyer, and then um, I guess we'll also want to share it online. Like, I was about to ask what formats you want because I can also like if you're planning to set to post it to certain social media, I can reformat it. So it's not like we can have the flyer that's like eight and a half by 11. And then we can have other shapes too. If you just let me know. Yes. You want to post it. Yes. So, um, and I, there's slightly different shapes, right. For Facebook and Instagram. Um, so um, hoping that the city will share a social media post about it. Um, I wonder if, you know what, maybe all these, all the speakers, their organizations, we could share the social media posts with them and they can put it on all of their um, social media accounts. Um, and then I can email out to the disability commissions that I have contacts for locally to invite them and um, attach the flyer when that's ready. And then hanging flyers. Thank you, Jeremy, for volunteering. And I'm sure more, more folks hanging flyers will be appreciated so it doesn't all fall. Yeah, I'm happy to hang flyers. Okay, awesome. Um, so that we get it around. Marilyn, are you trying to say something? Sorry, I see your hand. <laughs> I get a half up, I guess. Um, I'm wondering about the other events. Are they going to be on the flyer? Like, in, say, there's this event, but then there's the other I event. Um, at this time, this is our one uh, event with the Disability Commission. Oh, okay. Were you thinking of some of the other stuff that we've talked about in the past? Right. I thought there was going to be more than one event. So. 
Yeah, I think we've narrowed it down to this one. Oh, sorry, you weren't at last month's meeting. Sorry, you. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry to not catch you up there. Um, so this is uh, this is the the one public disability commission event for uh, Disability Pride Month. Okay. Um, any other details for the flyer? I think maybe just putting Keith's contact information if people want to reach out with access requests. Um, Questions, thank you, yeah. We should look at last year's flyer to make sure we're getting everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can pull that up. Or you might have it on your account, Jenna. I was about to say that I can look at it and see if there's anything that seems important and run it by you guys. I can pull awesome. it in. That's great. Thank you. Of course. Um, and if there's any images that people feel passionate about, I know last year it was more obvious because it was a movie screening. Um, but if anyone has an image they really want to be a part of it, you can let me know. Yeah, the Disability Commission doesn't have any kind of logo. <laughs> Now's the moment. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, graphics for a panel. I don't know, something fun, but that doesn't uh, detract from the readability. That's the, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else about the Pride Month event? And we will have our next meeting before that, the week before that. So if there's any last minute, oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll That's have, good. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's good. Good timing. Um, all right. Thank you all so much for that discussion and all the work that um, especially Kathy and Jeremy and Jacob have put in to making this happen. Thank you for all your work on behalf of the commission. I think this is going to be a really cool event. Yeah. So I hope we get the word out to lots of people so that we get a bunch of people who attend. Um, other business not anticipated. All right, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Emma, did you second? Sorry, you're muted, but I saw your hand. I'll second it. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much for your time and your energy. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you.